Hi. Now, I know what you're thinking. Justin, isn't it a little bit on the nose to be making a video outside called Reduce, Reuse, Recycle? Yes, it is, but we're going to go with it. So, let's set the stage. 2002, I look like this, and I'm in the second grade. When I was a kid in grade school, we had a lesson on the environment in our science class, and it was pretty basic. Basically said fossil fuels are bad, uh, there's a hole in the ozone, and something about acid rain, which at the time sounded just about as scary as quicksand did. And of course, we had the talk about recycling, which we all learned with the moniker reduce, reuse, recycle. And I remember the textbook saying something about taking shorter showers to reduce, turning egg cartons into stuff to plant flowers in for some reason for reuse, and of course, recycle all the stuff that you could at your house. I remember we had a contest to see which class could bring in the most empty cans to recycle, and the class that won got like a pizza party or something. And I got even more angry when I heard kids bragging about their parents that went and bought extra soda just so that they could have more cans to donate. At the end, you know, we tallied how many cans we turned in, the awards were given out, all that good stuff. And I remember everyone just being super proud about how many cans we recycled. And I was thinking about this the other day and I thought to myself, holy shit, my teachers were idiots. And that's not to say I didn't love my teachers. I still do, uh, except that one that tried to get my mom into a pyramid scheme last year. I'm still mad about that. But that's to say they majorly missed the point here. And I think it has a lot more implications than just that. See, if you actually do some research on the whole reduce, reuse, recycle thing, you'll actually find that it's in an order of importance. The most important being reduce consumption. If you can't reduce consumption, then at least reuse what you can, ideally in creative ways that aren't just making flower pots out of garbage. And lastly, if you absolutely must get rid of something and if it can be recycled, then it should be recycled. Unfortunately, the first two are typically overlooked just because they're the hardest, despite being the most important and most important. Impactful. So you see parents going out to buy soda cans that they weren't going to in the first place just to recycle them is against the entire idea. But you see a lot of products that boast this kind of more environmentally sound packaging, which ironically drives more consumption, leading oftentimes to an even larger environmental impact than before. The real test and contest, I think, should have been to see how few cans of soda your family bought or how many less gallons of gas did your family burn or how much less water did you use that month. For those of you who have some trouble following, I'm going to paint this whole thing in a different picture that is over exaggerated but gets to my point buying a can of soda just for the sole purpose of recycling it is like driving your car off of a cliff just so that you can repair it you know actually i really like the simile of driving your car off a cliff we're gonna go with it so let's apply the logic of reduce reuse recycle to driving off of a cliff here the amount of damage to your car is your environmental impact of things by consumption the first level reduce is just don't drive off a cliff just don't do it there are plenty of other things you can do with your time it's that simple just simply reduce the amount of driving off of a cliff you do maybe limit it to every other tuesday whatever works for your schedule okay let's go one level down what if I have to drive my car off a cliff because that's how I support my family with their ad revenue from my vlog where I drive off of cliffs? Okay, well, I understand for some people it's necessary, but if you're going to do so, maybe do so in a manner that doesn't wreck your car. So maybe take the incline down instead of just going right off. Yeah, your car might still be damaged at the bottom and you certainly won't be winning any style points, but you'll still be able to drive it once you hit the bottom. Now we covered the first two, let's go down to the last one. Well, guess what, Justin? I'm not gonna let you or any other prissy college educated friends tell me, a free American, that I can't drive off this cliff. And guess what? I'm already halfway to the ground as we speak. Okay, well, go ahead and yeet you and your car off of that cliff. At the very least, wear a seatbelt, don't disable your airbags, just so you might live to one day once again drive off a fucking cliff. And this is where the other half of my viewers that didn't leave in the first part say, what the hell? I didn't know Justin was a, some tree-hugging hippie snowflake. Unsubscribe. Well, bad news, guess where I learned all this stuff. And there's another good way of showing how people are kind of missing the point with this whole thing, and it kind of manifested in the whole save the turtles, don't use plastic straws debacle. People started adopting holier-than-thou attitudes because they started using metal or paper straws, totally ignoring the hidden water costs and carbon footprint that is required to make a single metal straw, on top of all the other things that go on with economies of scale, when the actual real solution was to just drink out of a cup like a normal fucking human being. What I'm saying is the solution to the problem of straws wasn't to go out and buy more stuff on top of the other straws you're already using, nor is it to go onto Facebook and call people who worry about the environmental impact of plastic a snowflake lip tart to your other Facebook friends that have your exact same profile picture. Again, it's to just drink out of a cup like a normal human being. And just one more caveat before I move on to my point, People saying drinking straight from the cup is gross, but then at the same restaurant, they'll shove a fork in their mouth that's been used a hundred times a day by just strangers. 
I rest my case. This kind of buying in to fix a problem is made fun of by the Slovenian philosopher Slavov Žižek because they justify it by saying it's good for the environment, which is, in reality just means less bad for the environment. I am a consumerist. And uh, uh, instead of doing something to really change, Things to I don't know stop uh, ecological uh, 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 ecological uh, uh, ruining the earth or whatever. Uh, I buy this, I pay a little bit more, and I can remain consumerist with good oh, conscience. Okay. I bought this one, so sorry. Leave me alone with big political topics. I already did my duty towards society and so on. And this ultimately gets to my bigger point, which is saying that a lot of the times when people are trying to solve problems, they think adding things to the mix is going to solve things, when in reality, they should probably be taking things away from the mix to solve the problem. So if you're emotionally not doing so hot or you're stressed out or something, very rarely is adding things going to help. Emotionally fueled Amazon buying statistically ain't going to work in your favor. And that's definitely not to say you shouldn't relax at the end of a hard day or a hard week or reward yourself for all the hard work you've done or if you've accomplished something. But if the reason you're treating yourself is because of some external factor that you're ignoring that's stressing you out while doing nothing but add to the balance on your credit card, then you're really just digging your own hole deeper. It's very rare that indulging in more consumerism or buying more things you don't need to begin with is going to solve any of your problems. So if you can't sleep because you slam coffee all day, you're on your phone from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. and you never actually exercise, a pair of blue light glasses isn't going to solve your problems. Yeah, it might maybe mitigate some of the symptoms, but ultimately you're just building more dependencies on other things and adding to the problem itself. So now if you find yourself without your blue light glasses, you're going to be even worse off than you were to start with. So maybe don't do the 4 p.m. coffee or the 11.30 Netflix binge if you're trying to get to sleep earlier. It's like if you're trying to lose weight and they make a bag of chips that only has half the calories and you decide to eat twice as many bags. And like the saying goes, a designer knows when he's reached perfection, not when there's anything left to add, but when there's nothing left to take away. Which, in my opinion, should have been the first route to take when solving problems to begin with.